Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews. Thanks so much for choosing us and listening to us each week. Uh, I'm really excited about my guest. Uh, I just met him not long ago, but I just fell in love with what he does and kind of how he got into the industry, and I wanted to share that with you. So um, I'm going to let you, Brad, just jump in there and tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. I'm Brad Bauman. Uh, I work with Osico LFAP, which was founded back in the 80s, and we merged with another little sister company out in North Shields. So uh, I'm located at our parent lo location in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, uh, and I serve as the innovation engineer. Uh, been in this role roughly 18 months. Uh, it's exciting. It has a fun story about how I got here, what I'm doing, and what we want to do. So yeah, well, I think it's kind of cool. Um, innovation money. engineer, it, you know, and we'll talk about that for sure. Definitely want to dive into that um, because it's so important and definitely um, innovation. And, and I want to hear all about kind of what it means to you. But um, let's start with how you got in the industry. Yeah. So it kind of curtails all the way back to when I was a young lad right out of high school. I was 18 years old, good with low voltage electronics, uh, not very good at anything else, including school at the time moved into a small military defense company to start looking at really a different demographic. How do I serve the people that protect us? So this was working with Department of Defense entities, uh, local SWAT, uh, some of these more fun government officials. So having that appeal of, okay, this is cool, this is niche, and learning a manufacturing role a couple of years into it, realizing that I have this creative intuition and innovation passion to move into engineering, say. So a couple of years in working at Tactical Electronics, um, I decided to pursue engineering in the, in the evening. Went to a local university, uh, did JUCO for a couple of years, and then moved out to the, the big parent college, Oklahoma State University, and graduated with my BSME in, in 2019. So Tactical was definitely a pivotal molding who I am, kind of releasing that creativity, uh, working with that clientele, seeing some of the, the fun pieces. So uh, it's interesting because a lot of what I did within Tactical is in your standard manufacturing role and responsibilities. Uh, I worked in what we called the device manufacturing shop. Uh, in this case, we made inert training aids. So at that time when I was serving a manufacturing role, it was how do we teach our bomb technicians to defeat fake bombs? Uh, so when they go into real life applications, they're equipped and prepared. The same way that you have these tech technical schools and colleges teaching hands-on experience, we were doing the same with, with bomb technicians. So I would say over the course of years, I've, I've constructed well over 10,000 inert training aids, um, everything you would see to in theater to things that or domestic scares, uh, pursuing and, and training on Boston Marathon bombing, Aurora, Colorado uh, massacre that occurred back in 2015. All these relevant topics were the guys that we were teaching to make sure that we were keeping safe. So it became a passion, protecting people, making sure we're serving a mission to keep people safe. So as I started engaging and moving up the, the ladder, if you will, within this small electronics company with a mechanical engineering degree, it became pretty evident that my fit was going to be limited, not in a bad way, just in my own personal development. I sort of wanted to look at how can I serve the same mission in the same portfolio of protecting people. So I spent, man, a couple of years in a mechanical engineering facet or role within tactical electronics and found the right fit. It took probably close to 12 to 18 months to truly really get into okay, what is, what's the next thing? In this case, it's, it's pressure safety management, right? So CQL LFAB is a, is a rupture disc company in a whole. Uh, what does that mean? We protect PRVs from valve damage. That, you know, uh, some people are familiar, some people aren't. I definitely wasn't when I first came into, came into a CQL LFAB with what a rupture disc is and how it works. Uh, I was very soon thrown to the wolves. You know, our team, uh, over here at Osequel Fab is the innovation 
or new value development team. So we do new products, we do partnerships, we do anything that brings value to the organization as a whole. And one of the first projects I got to work on was uh, what we coined the low KR rupture disc. And it was, uh, it was a really fun opportunity to start taking an industry known technology and rectify it into the 21st century. We sat down, put it underneath a high-speed camera and really got to look at what a rupture disc does and how to identify and make it better. So not only are we making it safer and more reliable for our consumers, but we have a better understanding and we can spread that knowledge throughout the industry. So we, we encourage our sales representatives and teams as, as they're out to, to engage, especially when we have our engineers present to, to share some of that footage and talk through our new capabilities. So yeah, I think um, I think it's interesting. There's a couple of things there. Um, you know, first, of course, you didn't have kind of that traditional um sure. getting into this space, right? Um, but you always knew that and you always kind of worked with things with your hands, very hands-on type of person. So you kind of straight out the gate went into mechanical engineering. Uh, which I think, of course, is a great fit. But then this company that you're working with now, um, the innovation side of that, something that I pulled um, from their mission that I think is really cool to tell people. Um, and so I'm going to read it because I'll get it wrong uh, if I don't hear. Uh, but it's it's like the benefits, right, of working there and, and the purpose, okay? It says pers- purpose is protecting life, solutions for safer and cleaner world, uh, and I mean, just that tagline in itself, protecting life solutions for a safer and cleaner world, it just ties in so perfectly to what you were looking for as a mission. Um, and so that speaks to me, it speaks to kind of that foundation, uh, with the company. And then it also talked about kind of your pillars about empowerment, diversity, equity, inclusion, of course, got my, uh, attention there too. Um, but I mean, that's that really that combination of all of that. And then showing the video of the disrupturing uh there's nothing that you can explain you can't explain that in words to me but to show me that in a video uh was super cool um so i know that they've got the right person there in innovation anyway uh but what what have you learned um through that process (laughs) i've learned that i don't know (laughs) near enough to, to really propel things and maybe i'm being too humble with that statement but it's definitely been a learning curve as far as getting into the industry and really starting to connect with the people so much gets lost in transgression. And this is, this is probably one of my stronger hats is meeting and connecting with, with individuals, especially on the manufacturing side. So uh, there is often this cultural divide between what we call shop guys and office guys, and it exists in any organization. And uh, I'm, I personally want to make an embodiment outside of that. I want to take the knowledge that we see on the shop floor and apply it to an engineering realm. As an engineer, we don't know everything. It, it's, a, it's a rigorous process of innovating and failure and figuring out what we can improve on from our failures that often gets missed. Well, there's a plethora of resources. I knew nothing about a rupture disc. I'm thankful enough that I got to work with guys in the shop that knew the industry for 30 plus years, that knew what needed to be happening and what needed to be changed. So that's definitely my vice and my crutch that's uh, propped up myself and even some of this team. We, we kind of were breaking that barrier that, that can cripple organizations or even engineering departments in a whole. So that's kind of what sets us out as far as the IMB team or this innovation group. Um, but it's kind of <laughs> supported me for sure. Yeah. And just um, if we think about the word innovation, what does that mean to you? It, it's change. It's how do we... How are we constantly improving to be better or make the best? Uh, There's so many things that that serve this innovation purpose or innovative purpose, and it doesn't always have to look like engineering. It's it's just one facet. So if we can put the right people together, the right organizations, the right companies, the, the right opportunities, you can innovate and innovation will become evident and start building that pipeline to innovation. So uh, definitely learning business strategies. You go through this startup mentality and I think that's a great way to, to, to poach innovation is kind of being a startup. Yeah, well, I think of, you know, you're tapping into that intro, uh, entrepreneur spirit that you have. Um, I definitely saw that. You, I mean, that. That's kind of behind the scenes, your side hustle there. You two are an entrepreneur, um, or at least uh, striving as um, yeah. one that's been an entrepreneur for 11 years. I understand. 
Um, but it is a little bit about that innovation piece where you're, you're, you're not creating something brand new. A lot of the times you're adding to something that exists and um, that creates of how to improve and change. I think you're right on with that. Um, and we have to do that definitely when we're, we're a startup or even established business needs to be thinking of that. Um, but that flexibility and um, belief that that is where you should spend your energy energy to kind of go and uh, improve on what you've built. I think that definitely takes you to the next level. Um, what about uh, the, the company and kind of the work that you're doing right now? What is most interesting to you? Oh, I think it's definitely the diversity. So our team focuses on whether it's people or projects, core, non-core. And when I say core, I'm talking about rupture disks and pressure relief valves. So because our portfolio is kind of those core pieces, this team is now looking outside core pieces. How can we look at non-core solutions? So it's having interactions with European customers or uh, someone out of Houston or even people like yourself, Charlie, they're like, hey, I'm in the industry. Let's talk a little bit. Let's get to know one another. So it's really it's really a strong suit of mine because I unfortunately like to talk. <laughs> You're a great talker. Um, and th I was so, so thankful to meet you and, and that you are sharing your story so openly. And um, I think that that is encouraging for people. And it's really something that we need to see, um, especially like the the engineer that can talk to people. You know, we want to just break that stereotype for engineering that, you know, that they're, you know, kind of alone in a lab somewhere or something. It, it, you are out, you are um, networking um, at an event, um, kind of being that social person to engage and make business opportunities is is what I saw. And then, you know, that spirit, like I said, of um, innovation is just clear with you. And so I love that there is an innovation engineer. Um, so that term, I had never heard it before. So how super cool is that? Um, and I guess just as we've been talking, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? Yeah, I guess the biggest takeaway is uh, titles at the end of the day don't don't mean everything. It's what you're doing to disrupt the industry. Sure, I'm an innovation engineer, but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what are you doing to make a difference? What are you doing to make a positive impact in our in our environment, in our industry? So I, I definitely think um, I, I was working with a company and I'll, I'll squirrel real quick. I was working with a company this past week and someone opened with, I'm not a technical guy, I'm not the engineer, but he still served the same purpose, still served the same mission of what we are working towards. And that was safety and that was protecting others' lives. So it's really important. Don't get bogged down like, oh, they're the solution. No, you can be the solution no matter who you are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. If you have an innovation or an innovative idea, share it. Like there's so much need for that in, in, in this culture and in this embodiment of the industry. Yeah, that's such great advice because you don't want to lead with, you know, de devaluing yourself when you're trying to lead within that space. Um, just kind of go at it as you are the expert in what you have to say. So, so absolutely just, um, just tell them what they need to know. That's what I always like to say. Um, one thing I do want to ask you a little rapid fire sure. uh, questions sure. I didn't prepare you for, but that's okay. You, you Perfect. Can, I know you can do it. Uh, is I want to know what your favorite book is. Mark Gladwell, I think it's 10,000 things, 10,000 minutes, I can't remember. Well, we can look it up, but there is um, 10,000 10, things. hours. And then 10,000 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a... Have you read that one? I haven't. So I love I love asking these questions because then you know I do get these resources too. So it's it's I'm getting them and then the listeners are getting them as well. Um, and then just for fun, uh, what's your favorite song? Ooh, currently Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn. Love it, love it. And then uh, best advice you've ever received? Don't be afraid to fail. It's a good one. It and then if you um, were going to tell a young person, you know, some advice from you coming into this space, what would you say? <laughs> Part of me wanted to joke and say, turn around and run, but that's just my dry sense of humor. Uh, it's to a young person coming into this space is 
don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to see the other side. Don't think you're you're too good. Don't be afraid to get dirty. Like that's that's the simplest way to put it. I love it. And uh, I do love your humor. Uh, and so Good. if y'all reach out to Brad, um, just be ready. He, he'll he keep you on your toes. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, you know, that's part of seeing that, like, um, you don't have to fit in this personality box to be in the industry, to be an engineer, to be an operator or anything, um, to be a marketer um, either, uh, or to be, you know, a business owner, which I love to say that I am. Uh, who knew? That, that would happen. And so it, it's wonderful to spend this time with you, Brad. I, um, I think everybody you know, can kind of look at your story. And, and I think a lot of people have a similar story of how they got into the industry. There's not a one way, there's a zigzag, if you will, of what, what they can do, but um, you have a super interesting story. Um, anytime that you can get a, you know, get at a table with Brad and let him share some of these amazing things that he's done in his lifetime, please do that. Brad, how can they get in touch with you? Oh, there's a few different ways. Um, <laughs> I would give out my personal cell phone, but I don't don't think it'll get blown up. I'll go ahead and give you my, my personal email. So the best way to get a hold of me is going to be Bauman, so B-A-U-M-A-N-N, -N, period, Brad, B-R-A-D, at yahoo.com. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Brad, for your time. Uh, it's wonderful to see you again. Oh, thank you so much, Charlie. It was a pleasure. It's always good to be on your show.